Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and Samsung just launched the Samsung One UI 6.0 beta program for the Galaxy Z Flip 5 and the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Now, if you remember my latest video that I just uploaded was talking about the latest update, the software update for the Flip 5 and Fold 5. It gave you the October 1st security patch, but not only did it do that, but it was getting you ready if you wanted to, to sign up for the beta program. And it also updated the version of Samsung members, which Samsung members application is where you're able to enroll and sign up for the beta program. Now, all you have to do is open up Samsung members. Make sure again, you have the latest version. On the very top, you're gonna to see all these different banners. And just yesterday, there was only eight banners. Now there is nine because they added in the banner that allowed you to sign up for the beta program. Now I'm only going to sign up on the Fold 5. This is actually where I have my SIM card. This one's only Wi-Fi only, but this is where you go inside, you hit on register. And then once you hit on register, you go all the way down. You can read a little bit about the beta program. And this is where you click enroll. So now that you have enrolled, I'm just gonna move this Flip 5 out of the way move this one on over. We're gonna take a look to see if the update was pushed off. It's one of those over the air updates. You do have to manually just go inside of your settings to see if it's sitting there. So once you go inside of the settings, you go inside of software update, then you go right over here, you go to download and install, and it may sit there right away. It does say that it can take up to 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna wait for it to come through. Right now it's 544. We'll see how long it takes for it to push through. Then we're able to get this thing downloaded and installed. So I just checked one more time. It is now 545. It took one minute for it to come through. And this is where now you're able to read everything that is brand new. Now the size of this update of Samsung One UI 6.0 with Android 14 is gonna be basically 2.8 gigs. So it's 2,739 megabytes. It gives you that Samsung One UI version of 6.0. The version ends in ZWJ2 with the uh, security patch of October 1st. Now, if you wanna read all of the changes, it's gonna be right inside of here and there is so much stuff that's going on. And I'm also gonna see if there's gonna be a big difference between the Galaxy S23 Ultra versus the Fold device to see if there is any changes or differences. And if there is, I'll definitely come back with another update uh, showing off some of the really cool features you're able to do on the Fold 5. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit on install now. And then we're gonna come through, we're gonna read and skim every single thing that's brand new. And then again, I'll upload another video in the future talking about the top five or the top 10 best brand new features for the Fold 5 with Samsung One UI 6.0. Now it's at this point in the video that I like to state that if you're brand new here at the Challenge Jimmy is Promo, you appreciate these tips, tricks, tutorials, and the latest information on your Samsung Galaxy devices, make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications to so get notified for all future videos. Now that the update is done and complete, we are running on Samsung One UI 6.0 with Android 14, and this is what it looks like on the Galaxy Z Fold 5. I know some of you get a little butthurt because I always turn off my animations, or at least I put it down to a 0.5. I went all the back up to 1x so this way you can see all the animations that is that we're going to be going through in this video going from application application screen to screen so we're just going right back inside of this software update we're going to go back inside of last update now inside of here if you want to read everything that is brand new you just want to click on all changes now the first category that they talk about is quick panel and as you can see here the very first thing that you saw was the new button layout this is the infamous button layout that everybody has talked about this is all of the screenshots everywhere on the internet showing off what it now looks like. The other thing is that you can also instantly access the full quick panel. Now, what they mean by that is that this is just a quick little panel right here. This is your first little settings. You also have your brightness control, device control. And then when you pull it down twice, you have the full running of the quick settings. So if you would like to go into the full access of quick settings quickly, you're gonna do it on the right hand side, but you first have to turn it on. So once you go inside of your little uh, settings area here of all the quick settings, you'll see this little edit button. And this is where you go to quick settings, instant access, and this is where you turn it on. So in order for you to actually get to this screen right here with one swipe, you have to do it on the complete top right hand side. And it pulls it down right into the whole full quick settings with one swipe. So this way you wouldn't have to go pretty much anywhere on the screen and swipe down twice. 
Now next up, you can quickly access the brightness control. So now the brightness control bar now appears by default in the compact quick panel view. And so you can see it as the quick panel view or just the full view. So basically we pull it down once there, right there by default, will show your brightness control. Now next up will be the improved album art display. So while playing music or videos, album art will cover the entire media controller in the control panel. If the app playing the music or video provides album art, you also have enhanced layout for notifications. So anytime you get notifications, everything will be in its own separate card. And then if you let's say that you get two Gmail notifications, they'll actually both be listed in one area inside of a little separate card itself. And then maybe Facebook and then Instagram and then your Twitter. You can also sort notifications by time. Here is the lock screen. So you can actually now reposition the clock. So beforehand, you're only able to choose which clock style you would like to have or clock face. You weren't able to actually drag it around. So however it was set up by default was the way you had to use it. Now you can actually swipe it and move it all around anywhere you would like it to go. For the home screen, you have simplified icon labels. So now it's gonna be a straight single line. It's cleaner, it's a more simple look. So instead of it being in a couple different lines of showing you the, the name of the application. So let's say we go inside of Samsung right here. You can see right here, Galaxy Wearable. Instead of it being in two lines, it's one line. So now you can see one line, one line, one line, one line. You might actually be able to see some of these ones show off in two right before this update. So it's a way to kind of streamline everything, make everything look pretty much the exact same if it's either a short name or a longer name. Then you also have drag and drop with two hands or two fingers, it doesn't have to be with two hands. So now you can actually drag and drop everything from one application to another application. You can actually bring everything from your homepage to a second homepage. I've shown this off several times and I'll make sure that I have all of those videos linked below this video inside the description. Now, some of you ask about my font that I use and now that we're on Samsung One UI 6.0, there is a new default font. So if you're asking what I'm using, it's to the regular default one, and that is why it looks a little bit different, which also will help this one right here, which is the simplified icon labels, because it's a little bit smaller when it comes down to the font, it's a little bit more fine, and it's allowing for that single line for a name. Multitasking, you can keep pop-up windows open. For the Samsung keyboard, there's brand new emoji designs. For content sharing, for pictures and video previews. Now for the weather, there is a new weather widget. There's also more information in the weather app. So now they're actually gonna give you some details about snowfall, moon phases, and times, the atmospheric pressure, visibility distance, dew point, and a few other things interactive map view and enhanced illustrations, especially inside of not only the new weather widget, but also the weather application. Now inside the camera, you do have custom camera widgets. So this way you can actually add a widget to your home screen that will automatically open up whatever camera and mode you want it to go to. So you can have one widget, when you tap on it, it'll go to your front facing camera and it'll go inside of video recorder. Then you can have another widget sitting right next to it. When you tap that one, it's gonna open up the rear camera in portrait to take a photo. So this way you can have anything that you have as your favorite or the things you use the most can actually be saved as a widget. There's also more alignment option for watermarks. You have quick access to resolution settings. There's also easier video size options. You can keep your pictures level. You can apply effects more easily, scan documents easily, quality optimization. So there's actually three levels of quality optimization. So you can actually do maximum to get you the highest quality pictures, which is the one that I always use. You can have minimum, which will take the pictures as quickly as possible, or you can choose medium to get the best balance of speed and quality. There's also a new auto frames per second setting for videos, and you can also turn off this swipe up down to switch cameras. Now going through some of those settings we just got done talking about inside the camera. So sometimes you might find yourself accidentally doing this where you're switching between the front facing, rear facing. Um, I like the option there. Some people may not wanna just go right over here to find this little icon on the right hand side. I would rather swipe, but if you would like to turn this off, you go inside of settings and you're gonna see the option right here, which is the swipe up down to switch camera. So either you can have it on or you can have it off. Here's watermark. So if you are someone who uses a watermark, you can actually see a bunch of different options here. You can change the fonts. You can choose, you know, what you want it to show. Here's your alignments, you know, left side, middle, right, top, bottom, wherever you want the watermark to go. And then here's your auto frames per second for videos, which a lot of times this will help, you know, create brighter videos 
in low light conditions and you can choose how you want it you know to basically work used for 30 frames per second videos only or do you want it to be used for 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second now for gallery you can save clipped images as stickers you have an enhanced story view you can drag and drop with two hands or two fingers you have quick edits in detail view and then down for the photo editor now you can adjust decorations after saving you can undo and redo uh, actually much easier now enhanced the layout so they did have a new tools menu and it looks much better and they also combined a few different things especially the straighten and perspective options you can draw on custom stickers there's new text backgrounds and styles for studio, this is a brand new video editor. So you're not only just using a video editor inside, inside of your gallery, you're actually now able to do one that is called studio where there is more powerful video editing, which I've already covered in a past video. There is more saving options on the top right hand side. And then for video player, they have an enhanced layout. So the video player controls are easier to use. And there's even a playback speed control as well. So you can easily switch between going at 0.25 speed or two times the speed. For Samsung Health, they have a new look for the home screen and custom water cup sizes, which this is very smart because maybe you drink out of a cup that's only six ounces, maybe not the eight ounces, or maybe you have one that's 12 ounces, but I don't see where this is actually at in the settings. And I think it's because we're waiting for the newer version of Samsung Health on our watch. Once the watch is updated with Samsung Health, the newer version, then I think we can actually finally see the custom water cup sizes. For calendar, you can uh, your schedule at a glance, view your reminders and calendar, and you can also move events with two hands or two fingers. Going down to reminder, uh, there is refined reminder list view, new reminder categories, more options for creating reminders, and create all day reminders. And then for Samsung internet, you can play videos in the background. You have enhanced tab list view for large screens, and you can move bookmarks with in tabs with two hands or your two fingers. For Samsung Smart Select, resize and extract text from pinned content, which is pretty cool because you weren't able to do that from before. And they also have a magnif magnified view. So this way, if you are using Smart Select and you're trying to find the perfect place to stop or the perfect place to go, you'll actually see a magnified view to see exactly where you are because maybe your finger is actually blocking the very edge of that little square. Bixby text call, so you can customize your greetings and you can also switch back to Bixby during a call. So basically Bixby text call is a way that you're able to answer a phone call without actually physically doing it. Bixby can do it for you. They will actually hear something else on the other end. You can see exactly what is being said by both parties. And if you get bored, you can actually now go back into Bixby text call during the phone call. So if you're tired of talking to them, you can actually go back inside of Bixby. It's pretty funny. Modes and routines, there's a unique lock screens depending on your mode, new conditions and new actions. Uh, for smart suggestions, there's a new look and feel, also more customization. For Finder, you can actually do quick actions for apps, meaning if you look at an application on your home screen and you press and hold, it'll give you quick actions such as going to your subscriptions page or going to uh, a the trending page in terms of YouTube or for Instagram, it'll go in directly into your subscriptions or go into a message. You can actually now do that inside of your Finder. So you just go inside your application tray and when you search for an application, you can actually now do quick actions with those apps. For my files, you can free up free space uh, or free up your storage space. You have integrated trash and gallery. So this way, when you delete something in your gallery, it's also going to show up in your regular trash in terms of my files. You can also copy files with two hands or two fingers. For Samsung Pass, you have safer sign-ins with pass keys. And then for settings, you have smarter airplane mode, which I showed off. It's pretty awesome. Anytime you go inside of airplane mode and then you turn something on like either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, it'll remember that for the next time you turn on airplane mode. You have easier access to battery settings. You can stay safe from security threats. If you were to basically try to download something, you know, from somewhere that you're not supposed to, or if it's being sent over via a USB cable, you also have accessibility options. So the new magnification options, customize cursor thickness, 
and you can also learn more about accessibility. So that was the quick overview of every single thing that's brand new in Samsung One UI 6.0 with Android 14. As you can see, there is a ton of brand new content, but I've already covered all of this on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I have videos talking about the best features, the best hidden features, the top 10 features, the top five features, my favorite three features, Every single thing will actually be linked below the video inside the description. It'll take you over into the Samsung One UI 6.0 playlist. Now, hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.